one tool to basically do everything is what I'm trying to create. We're almost two years into the development of this one, and I've got some exciting updates, some exciting additions that I want to share with you, some planned bug fixes in the upcoming month, and some other just really cool features that are uh, coming down the pipe. So let's not waste any time, get on the desktop and explore this. Uh, we're just gonna launch into Terminal. This is obviously the latest version of Windows 11 with that. It still works on Windows 10. I'm just trying to make it as you know, compatible as possible. But as I develop this, there will be bugs and other things that happen. Uh, and if you do encounter these, please let me know. Uh, I have an issues over on GitHub that you can submit, and then I put it into development cycle. I'll get into all that whole thing of how this is being built, how I approach bug fixes, uh, all here in just a few minutes. So for first off, let's explore the new features and uh, some, some of the cool additions. So we're gonna just launch it with an IRM, christitus.com forward slash win. Uh, since my last video, this is the new command. This is a little shorter. Now the old mint command still works. You can still do an invoke web request. You could even do bits. You could do a lot of different ways to launch this. This is just the easiest and shortest path that I've found. Now, first off, you'll notice one thing. We have a lot more programs and the scaling I've been working on as well. So if you're on like a 4K monitor or any high res, this is gonna scale really well as when you go up, It'll just scale up, it'll scale back. Uh, I've been working really hard on the WPF design to make this possible. Also, I'm working on expanding it. If you look in the back here, you'll notice chocolate is being installed. I've had some issues with Winget lately. Uh, some of the latest updates of Windows have not been kind for us Winget users. So I'm gonna start to diversify, add chocolatey, possibly scoop, uh, for some of the back end to, for these installations. And that's also going to expand what we can install too. So I'm going to expand this out even more. Uh, think of this as like night night on steroids for the install tab. When I say one tool for everything, this is literally going to be able to just go through and go click, 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 click and install whatever you want. Big notable changes with this update. This entire Microsoft tools section was added. So if you want to install one guy, uh, OneDrive, uh, PowerShell, those types of things. Like my PowerShell in the back, you see it's at 7.27. Let's just go ahead and hit start install and you can see it install the latest version of PowerShell. I think it's like uh, 7.3 if I was correct. Let's see. All right, it says it's installed PowerShell and we get the little prompt. Uh, this was another bug fix was sometimes this prompt would pop up before the program was installed. I have added some delays and checks to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, but having said that, let's just exit out of our program, close this. The other big thing here is upgrade installs. So after you've installed programs, one of the downsides to Windows is updating all these software programs. A lot of times you don't even know what's installed in your system. Now you could do like an app with CPL and pull it up and go, okay, what all do I have installed here and sort through all this. But independently updating all the programs in Windows just kind of stinks. That's where this upgrade installs button happens. If we press it, this is gonna run a universal WinGet upgrade and say, hey, all these programs are out of date. So you see Visual Studio Community 2022 is out of date. Oh, my Posh is out of date. Git is out of date, so on and so forth. So this actually goes through, grabs the latest version and upgrades your existing install. Even if you didn't install this in WinGet, it will go ahead and do it. So I'm gonna just let this run and you're gonna get to see all these update happen. Uh, now, this one actually failed. Sometimes it doesn't work, but very seldomly does this happen. Most times uh, things will update properly through here. All right, the upgrades are done. Let's rerun that. We had 13 programs that needed to be update. Let's see how many more uh, need to be upgraded after doing this again. Imagine it'll probably still be one or two. Let's see what we have. Looks like it found two. The studio community is having issues updating, so I might launch this program independently and run the updater. So now that we've figured, finished all our updates, we've installed all the programs we want, let's go and move into tweaks tab. There's a couple caveats I wanna make in this and some feedback I've gotten from the community. First off, if you're a Microsoft Edge user, skip this entire tab. This is not for you. I'm not gonna customize this tool for Microsoft Edge users. Uh, and you might be like, what's going on with that, Titus? 
a lot of the built-in telemetry and services in the background that Microsoft Edge relies on requires it to be operational and active. Uh, most people are like, well, I watched some other YouTuber and he said Microsoft Edge gets the best performance results. Yes, it does a lot of times, but that comes at a cost because it's leaning on the system to do some of that heavy lifting. It's also collecting a ton of data and telemetry. That's why I say Microsoft Edge is not something I can uh, kind of work around. It's not something I'm gonna build this tool. So don't use the tweaks section if you're a Microsoft Edge user. Another cautionary tale here is removing all Microsoft Store apps. When you do this, it will strip out almost anything you've installed through the Microsoft Store, and that can be problematic. So a lot of games will get uninstalled. If you're using WSL, a lot of those containers will get uninstalled. So be careful. I even put use with caution. One little bug fix here is I've tried to add some tool tips to tell you what these do as we evolve the thing. Another request was made to remove Cortana. Uh, if you do that, it will break search. That's one of the downsides here. A lot of times when I'm doing these tweaks, I'm trying to leave search intact, but a lot of times it does interfere with it because search and telemetry uh, go hand in hand a lot of times. The last thing I want to leave you with on the tweaks tab, a very cautionary tale is removing Microsoft Edge. Now, I just bashed Microsoft Edge at the start here, but if you remove Microsoft Edge, you will not be able to reinstall it. Microsoft Edge is built into the Windows system and how you surgically remove it would be equivalent of surgically removing like one of your kidneys. You can't just take that kidney out and then just jam it back in there. Well, I guess you maybe could, <laughs> but it's about the same operation. It's not recommended. And a lot of times it just does not go back in properly. So if you remove Microsoft Edge, you should know it removes Microsoft Edge forever. So that's one thing that uh, is, uh, again, uh, very something you should know before running this tool and just stay away from these options if you're unsure. The recommended ones will not interfere with any of these things I just talked about. That's why I don't check them by default. This is really for your more advanced users. Uh, but these will remove a lot of stuff if you want to go down that road. A couple other additions is adding like ultimate performance profile. If you add this and we launch into like power.cpl, actually powerconfig.cpl, you'll notice there's high performance, but we now have this new ultimate performance tab that uh, just kind of makes sure nothing goes to sleep uh, and it just uses a ton more electricity. Uh, one thing I will say about ultimate performance, you will get better performance but it comes at the cost of energy savings. So do not use this on a laptop ever. You should never use ultimate performance on a laptop. I think that should go without saying, but I did have someone mention it and I was like, okay, well don't, don't do that. <laughs> so uh, another little tidbit about these tweaks, uh, still working on like DNS. I think this is still a little buggy, but I wanted to make it to where you could just install, you know, Cloudflare, which is like one uh, quad ones, Google quad eight, uh, level three, 4.2.2.1, and then open DNS. So these are some DNS things you can easily set uh, for independent computers. This is really nice uh, to get around a lot of your ISP problems. And the big thing I, I would do also on every single install, I made a video about Shell, the essential app, set classic right-click menu. I would do this on every Windows install, and I would come back here and install the shell expanded context menu. This is gonna make your life way easier. So if you're in your file explorer, you right click, you can see I got a lot of customized ability for my context menus right here. I, I absolutely love this. Uh, it's something that is very cool. So too long, didn't watch that past video, install shell and then come into the tweaks and set the classic right-click menu. On the config, not too much has changed here. We've added some newer things. Uh, set up auto login. I kind of went back and forth on this because this is considered a security flaw as it will auto log in your PC, but I still like using it, especially for like VMs like I'm in right now. Uh, I don't want to be flipping back and forth and be like, okay, I need to log into my VM. Let me VNC in and all that business. I'd rather just auto log in. So I made a little convenient button here. Reset Windows updates, this has pretty much stayed the same. System corruption scan, this just does an SFC and a DISM. This is just checking the current install. It does not do a from sources, 
So if you have a lot of system corruption, you're probably going to still need to go download the Windows ISO and run a DISM with the sources from that ISO. And then we just have our legacy panels. Nothing's changed here. These are all, all the Windows 7 uh, panels. And then finally, updates. This is something that I need to explain more to folks. I try to outline this and set this up in a little bit better fashion, but default out of box just resets it to how Microsoft wants it. So if you go to security recommended settings, you can easily click default and it'll reset it back to how it should be. The security recommended settings are my recommended ones. I never recommend this last option. I just added it because people really wanted it. And the security recommended, what it does is it installs bug fixes and security patches for your windows, which should be pretty much mandatory. I would do this in a business where I would install those patches, but it doesn't install feature updates. That's the big difference here. So if there's a new shiny feature, you're not going to get it if you have the security or recommended settings. Why I recommended this is because a lot of times you will want this setting for your average day use. And then something cool happens. Like when you launch this and you're like, oh, check it out. I got file explorer with tabs or I got task manager over here with the cool now uh, actual saying. And uh, you know what? I got to give Microsoft credit on this one because whoever's in charge of the UI over there is doing a great job of having a unique identity because this looks great. It looks so much better than what Windows 10 looked like. Windows 10 kind of reminded of a cobbled mess. Whoever's in charge of the unifi unifying a lot of these UIs, I think they're doing a great job. And I have to give credits where credit's due because I do enjoy this new interface in the latest version of Windows 11. But having said that, that's security recommended updates. I would recommend doing this. And then let's say something cool does happen. Come back over here, click the default. And then when you're done updating, come back here, set the recommended and you can go back and forth. The cool thing about these tweaks is you can run them over and over. Let's say I want to run this. I can just say, okay, run these tweaks for me. And I can do that at any time. It's not going to mess anything up. It's just going to run in the background, get it done. And then I can exit. So that's the all in one tool. I'm adding more stuff to it. There's a lot more in the pipeline. I want to show you that now, the actual future of the tool, how I developed the tool, how you can contribute if you like. So I opened up a project that is easily accessible. You can actually access this. You can see what's in process. Uh, some WinGit problems on certain installs, some features from the old Win10 script where I first created it back in 2020 that I'm still adding back in. The Ultimate Performance Edition, we just added that with this last uh, merge. And then uh, some actual new program additions for the next update. And then you can see Scoop and Chocolatey additions, which is going to expand what we can install with the tool even more. Option to disable Windows Defender. This is one that I again I'm going to have to put you know caution symbols around because once you remove Defender, there's no reinstalling Defender. So very much like Microsoft Edge, since they're baked into Windows. Installing Tronscript for those infected machines using this one tool to help install in clean systems, I think is the next logical step to make it one tool to basically grab all these things so you're not hunting and hunting around for all these resources and then enabling some toggles. Some things just get disabled and a lot of people don't want to do an undo all. They just want to untick that one problem from the tweaks. So that's one thing I'm working on and just expanding out this to be a little more complete. This is the main GitHub page. If you do have an issue, come over to the issues button and click on a new issue over here. If you click new issue, I obviously have to be signed in. It'll give you, do you want to submit a feature request, meaning something new to the system or a bug report? And the big thing is you need to be as specific as possible when issuing bug reports, because if you just say it broke my system, it doesn't work. It, I get a black screen or those types of generic issues, I'm not a mind reader. I don't know what happened with your system unless I was actually there. You need to be as more as specific as possible to get your issue resolved. If it's just a blanket issue, you're going to get closed out and deleted uh, just because I can't do anything with that. You got to be uh, think of constructive criticism, and that's really what I'm going for with my issue. So I, I'll fly through these. I usually check these on a daily basis, and then I add 
and then change and put it into our production model right over here where I go, okay, what things I need to get to, things I'm working on, and then things that are in active production that are in process that are getting added, like this ultimate performance edition actually got merged by somebody else. So I can go ahead and close this issue out. So that is our complete update on the one tool, how we're progressing, how we're gonna continue getting better with this. And I'm really excited about it. It's really coming along. I've gotten so much feedback, so much support from the community, both issues, merge and pull requests, and also those that have contributed and bought like the executable file. Executable file is not necessarily recommended. If you're familiar with PowerShell, you can just launch it through PowerShell. It's all open source still. And I'm never gonna obscure code from you. You can look at the code, you can take the code, you can copy projects. And I have just so many fun copycat things where I pulled up stuff or people sent me, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's totally my code. Uh, but I love that. I love to see what other people have done with it and other projects that has popped up. And I just encourage people, if you do take my stuff, try to open source it because then we can all learn from it. There's been some really cool projects that popped up and then they closed sourced it. And I was like, ah, oh, that's bummer. Uh, but at the same token, I, d I don't care. It's really just for the community to do whatever. If you want to take this and say, I only want these tweaks and put that in your business, use it. It's not under GPL license. It's all MIT. So it's completely open. Major companies can use this. Everyday Joes can use this. I just want to give it away. And for those that support me to make all this possible, I think it's amazing. And I love this and I love the learning experience. I want to give a big shout out to developer Derp. He's one of the biggest contributors as of late. He's helped me with unit testing and we're still fine tuning some of the new things that are happening. So these updates are going to be more polished. There's going to be more uh, quality control on them and all that's going to be great. And, and a lot of that unit testing is coming from developer Derp. So big shout out to him. Thanks, man, for uh, all your contributions. And with that, let me know all everybody's thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.